So we come to the uh, Shield semi-finals. The teams who are trying to avoid the wooden spoon, so to speak. Georgia against the Arabian Gulf. The host nation or host the union, should I say. As we look down on the stadium that's now happily bathed in sunshine after the early uh, sandstorm and there is the Arabian side. Well, they so nearly created uh, a moment of history for themselves. Finally in the pool, losing to Scotland 14 points to 19. And that would have been their first ever pool game win in Dubai on their uh, nine seasons prior to this one. There's the Arabian Gulf. And here, the Georgians losing out to Portugal, so nearly holding France, but conceding defeats as well. And uh, a side that's built on their 15s team, and which uh, showed signs of getting back into the swing of sevens after an interval which uh, saw their last appearance in London. 2007. Jean-Luc Rebolal, who I see regularly in the officiating in the top 14, the top 14 of the French League Championship, and uh, thrilling rugby you find there too. The likes of Toulouse, Clermont Auvergne, and Perpignan, Paris Stade Francais, and great to see him again on the IRB World Series circuit. So the men from Eastern Europe, where rugby started in 1959, and they made their international sevens debut in 1992, and have competed in the last three finals of the IRB Rugby World Cup sevens, and have qualified for Dubai next March. The Arabian Gulf. Shield finalists uh, two years ago and losing to Tunisia in the semi finals at this stage last year. Still, that strange thing, really, where the underdogs, if you like, the lesser renowned teams in these tournaments will almost like to take a breather one senses with the, the kicks which the Leading nations, Eschew, seldom do they take the kick and uh, line out to follow when they get a penalty. Here they go then with Chris Gregory throwing in and it's against the throw. Tapped back indeed by uh, big David Chetidzi. He's been quite a useful find for uh, Alania Kakaber, the coach of Georgia. Georgia who qualified with a tremendous performance in the Hanover tournament. Wins over Russia, Romania, Spain and Ireland. It was that last one that got them into the last place going for the IRB. Seven World Cup finals. So referee Rebel Isle the scrummage. David Clark of the Dubai Exiles. Whose home ground for so long, well, 38 years hosted the Dubai Sevens and since 1999 hosted the uh, IRB's Seven Series. Big run by Johnny McDonald. McDonald goes for the corner, rolls it in and think will be given. The touch judge flag stays down. Jean-Luc Rebelard just consults and looks as though it's given and it is. So a lovely run by the man from the Abu Dhabi Harlequins, one of the newcomers, gets his third try of the tournament, which was a memorable thing for him. And, uh, well, it was a straight dash through the defence, which was rather spread-eagled. And McDonald tackled, but able to retain it as George Skinny came in with this tackle. But uh, kept his composure, held on and grounded the ball down with pressure. Try given. And it is Georgia who take the lead. Uh, it is uh, Georgia who take the lead with... Uh, the 
Georgia then would be fancy to uh, to win this. Arabian Gulf are still looking for a first win of the tournament. Back goes the try scorer. And here is Tuchet Shishvili. That's knocked on. Five nil midpoint of the first half here. Georgia. Sampalazzi faces rugby in Romania for Farouk Constantia. Quickly engulfed, literally, might I say. Oh, and the breakaway. And this time, Johnny McDonald is the man to score it. And this time, for the Arabian goal. So, the man from Abu Dhabi, new to the Golf squad and certainly making his mark. Just somehow just emerged from that little heap of players to dance through, unchallenged virtually. Marcus Smith has converted uh, pretty well up till now and adds another superb strike. The man who has been a part parcel of the Dubai Sevens in various sizes is in one of the social teams way back in 1994. This would be pretty young, but he's 29 now. So as a teenager, first appeared in this tournament. Nine uh, other tournaments going on alongside the Premier event, the IRB World Series event here. But immediately, Sam Karazzi on the counter, Georgia. Oh, he's slipped the tackle of Marcus Smith. He's got support wide, and it's Skinnin who's quick. They won't stop him. And Skinnin skins the defence. Well, great work by the 25-year-old Sam Karazzi, who has won 34 caps for Georgia has scrum half, played in the uh, Rugby World Cup, 15 the side, here he is. And uh, good vision here, he's looking to where the support is all the time. Gets away, still looking, by which time Georgi Skinin of the uh, Hooligans Club gets over. And so Georgia established their superiority, 12.7. Kiriri Kashvili, fly half in the national 15. Taken in by Steve Cooper, the Gulf right, captain. Right, 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 right. The door to Smith. steps. Good effort from Kiriri Kashvili with the tackle. But ball retention is good by the Gulf. Flipped away by McDonald. Goes on the little loop. Round Clark. Still going well. Little chip and chase now. Only two just Billy to cover. He's there in time to pick up the loose ball. Right on the stroke of half time. The siren sounds. Hand in the ruck penalty. That will mean it will be played. Even though we've gone past the seven minute time mark. So can the Gulf come back? A try would put it on even terms. The conversion would give them a two-point lead. Steve Cooper switches, goes wide to McDonald, and the threat. Oh, the arm raised in salute. Always a dangerous thing to do, but the try is good. And the Arabian Gulf, right, with the last ditch effort in this first half, have got all level at 12 points of all, and indeed. Terrific score, Steve Cooper. Well, captain's example here. 
you do take a risk by saluting the score before you've grounded it. The man from the Dubai Exiles has given it all square at 12, all right on the break. Sixth time in the Dubai Sevens, the man from the Dubai Exiles gives great heart to his side. And at the break, 12 apiece. Terrific contest. Shield semi-finals. Well, it'll be the last hurrah for one of these two. The winners go through to the Shield final. Runners-up will uh, bid their farewell to the crowd here. Traditionally, a little lap of honour. Nice uh, tradition that has developed on the seventh circuit as the losing team goes out at the semi-finals. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> 12 points of piece at half-time. Second half begins. Second shield semi final, the USA versus Scotland. And again, two nations who are hoping to at least restore some confidence and some pride going on to take the shield title, the lowest of the four competitions within the overall competition that goes cup plate bowl shield so that everyone gets to play at least twice on the second day knock out all through of course Twelve, twelve. it's this stage two where the fitness levels come even more into play a grueling day on the opening day three big contests for each team spread apart and the waiting then the warm-ups the intensity of the match the warm downs repeated three times over and come the second day those who are not at the same peak of fitness tend to be the ones who drop out late on particularly at the lower echelons no big urgency at the moment by either team perhaps reflecting something of that innate tiredness Five and a half minutes, time enough for anything to go one way or t'other. This is a great big goal. Johnny McDonald was setting it up again. This is uh, Marcus Smith. He's had a good tournament, Marcus Smith. Didn't quite get the finishing touch with Taif Al Dalami there. The look on went forward. And relief for Georgia. Kortuli Svikadze, the uh, Georgian uh, name for their seven squad well three times they've made the cup quarterfinals and once made a semi-final back in South Africa in 1999 the first season of the IRB World Series Ray Bingal Al Dalami incidentally from Muscat so the Abu Dhabi man and the Muscat man in this Arabian Gulf squad a little uh, chip ahead by Johnny McDonald's on the bounce here oh he's got it back yes second try 
for Johnny McDonald. Well, we talked about the man from Muscat, he created it, and the man from Abu Dhabi scored it. Now then, well, there was a little bit of doubt as to whether there might have been a knock-on, but I think it was a knock-back by the Georgian defender. And look at the delight is this to be. What would be a famous Arabian Gulf victory? They lost all five of their matches last year and never really got close to a win. So this really would be a, a feather in their cap. 17-12, conversion missed. Go back to a win over Kenya at this stage two years ago. That was their previous uh, high point. And certainly all their uh, preparations, notably the coaching help of Paul True, the South African coach, showing true benefit here. They've been competitive. They've been trained together since mid-June. and They've had games against Sri Lanka and Hong Kong and Kazakhstan. Played in the Singapore Sevens and that uh, their own organised uh, Tri-Nations tournament. But Georgia not out of it yet. Still only one score. 17-12 and two and a half to go. Mike Linovich and nervy times for the coach. Down at ground level. Don Patching with Dubai Exiles, another of the... Uh, four newcomers in this Arabian Gulf squad. They too, of course, will be part of the IRB World Cup sevens as the, uh, the host nation. So it's a big season for them. Into the last two minutes. I think there was a little bit of word there about uh, let's use up the time. Donald puts it away, and that will take what, by the time the line out's ready and done, it'll be a half minute, wound off the clock. They have the show in, of course, Chris Gregory, Dubai Hurricanes, his club. Two from there, Josh Sherry, another in the squad, this is Gregory away then, via McDonald, big Marcus Smith, he's been there probably their most potent weapon overall. Steve Cooper, the captain. Good distribution here and stretching Georgia one way, then t'other. Breaks down, danger time for Arabian Gulf. It's gone loose though, and Georgia a bit slovenly in their defense. Had the ball, but lost it in the, the turnover. And there's a penalty quickly taken. It must be McDonald, he's brought back. Referee Rebulal. Donald really has been the name of this tie. Dare I say one way or t'other, yes. Thank you, Keith. And he has the ball now. 35 seconds, and again, using up the time, and he's just saying to the guys, just calm it. Johnny McDonald. And there's a late switch. Is there? On comes Corey Oliver. And they have 25 seconds as they look for a place in the final of the Shield. 15 seconds, they've only got to just hold on for a few moments and then, oh, well, they could seal it with the dry. Josh Sherin goes for the line. Still just short. The man poised is Oliver. He goes wide, wide by McDonald. Little chip through the chase by Marcus Smith, and it finishes in glory. The celebrations begin as the siren sounds, and that is a famous moment for Arabian Gulf. They earn it well, their place in the Shield final. Good contest. Georgia just seemed to run out of steam, and they look dejected and disappointed. But here was the finishing touch. Marcus Smith, the 29-year-old, the most experienced, the oldest of the squad, 
from the Dubai Exiles Club, who rounds off their arrival here at the Sevens, having hosted 38 years the Dubai Sevens on their own club ground. But that is it. 22 points to 12. Well done, Arabian Gulf. And uh, Georgia, we will see you back here in March for the Rugby World Cup Sevens.